Hello students, welcome back. We're going to continue where we left off on our last lecture with our party analogy. We're going to take this analogy one step further so that I can help you with understanding a concept. In this lecture, I'll be asking you two questions. The first question will be simple in comparison, hopefully, but the second question will require a little more thought on your part. I want you to think about this one. I want you to pause the video and think about the answer to this question before you try to answer it. After that, I'll explain the answer to you. So let us begin. A few housekeeping things first. The number of people who attend the party will be a function of the number of the people who are there. We call that positive cooperation, and it is positive cooperation. The more precise term is positive cooperativity. So let's indicate that one here. And so the better phrase would be positive cooperativity. Okay, now let me ask you my first question. Let's say that in this situation, this is a normal situation for a party. The number of people who attend the party is a function of the number of people who are already at the party. Let's say that instead of playing the music through Pandora, let's say you hired a very good live band, and a live band came to the party, a very good local live band. Now, would that cause more people to attend the party or fewer people to attend the party? Would that make it a better party or a worse party? Let's answer this first question, students. Of course, the answer is going to be it's going to be a better party. So that's my first question. Question number two. I'm sorry, I have three questions. Question number two. If it's going to be a better party, then, as the cars drive by, would more people attend the party or would fewer people attend the party? Again, as cars drive by, would more people attend the party or would more people enter the house or would fewer people enter the house? Pause the video and answer this question. Of course, the answer is going to be that more people would attend the party. More people would enter the house because the party is better. Those two questions make sense. Now, my third question. This is the difficult one. This one is not as intuitive. Okay, looking at the curve here, one of two things will happen to this curve if the party is better or if more people enter the house. Either this curve is going to shift to the right or it's going to shift to the left. Now, I want to show that, but if I try to show here, the lines will get in the way. For example, I'm just going to show you why I have to do what I have to do here. So if I try to shift another curve to the right, if I try to shift the curve to the right here, you can see that the lines on top and the lines on the bottom, they interfere with one another. So for that reason, I'm just going to delete the end of the curve and the beginning of the curve, just to make things simpler. So it's going to be the same graph. I'm just going to do that one thing here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is copy this curve to make two new curves, one on the right and one on the left. Okay, now we have two new curves, the one on the left and a curve on the right. One of those represents the situation where the party has gotten better, where more people are entering the house, more people are attending the party. My question for you is this, which one represents the better situation, the curve to the left or the curve to the right? Again, my question is, one of these represents the situation where the party is better, more people are attending the party. Is it the curve to the left or the curve to the right? Please pause the video now. Think about this for at least two minutes. Think about what the answer should be. When you're confident that you have the answer, then come back, and I'll explain which one is correct. So now please pause the video. Okay, you've paused the video, and hopefully you've come up with the correct answer. Before giving the answer, I want to go through the math with you, and it should make a whole lot of sense. So shown here in our table is our data. There's one car, and people come in, two cars, maybe one, three cars, one, four cars, three, five cars, five, and then it quickly rises. If we have a very good band at the party, this is going to be the situation. If just one car drives by, since everyone knows that there's a good band, you're going to have zero people at the party. You're going to go right to maybe three people. And so here, there are going to be three people. If two cars drive by, then you're going to go right to five people. If there are three cars, so one, you're going to move right to ten. What happens is that all of these numbers here shift up. And I'm only doing this so you can see. So basically what happens is that these, all of these numbers shift up. And basically, you just get to 31 sooner. You still end up with the same numbers, but you get to all of them sooner. And so the right answer here would be that the curve shifts to the left. You have fewer cars, but you get to 31 sooner. You'll see this happen a lot with the binding of hemoglobin. There are some conditions that cause the, the oxygen to bind to the hemoglobin more quickly. In some situations, the curve causes the oxygen to bind to the hemoglobin more slowly. For example, going back to our analogy, in this situation, let's say if there's a natural gas leak in the neighborhood. There's this terrible smell of gas throughout the neighborhood. And so you think more people are going to go to the party, or fewer people are going to attend the party. Of course, the answer is going to be fewer people. And so which one of these represents a worse situation, or fewer people attending the party? And of course, that's going to be the curve to the right. It's going to take a great deal of cars for this party to get off of the ground. And so when we start looking at the binding of oxygen to hemoglobin, you'll have to remember these components. And we'll explain what everything represents, what the car represents, what the, the people represent, what the house represents, what the street represents. We'll look at all of these things. And so that's all I have to say about positive cooperativity and our house party analogy. I really hope that this helps you to understand the binding of oxygen to hemoglobin in the alveoli of the lungs. And so that concludes this lecture. I hope you've learned a lot.